My name is Ratsani, and welcome back to Inscription, Casey's Mod. Uh, yeah, we're going with one of the other decks today. Let's get some ants going on. Um, but which of the challenges are we going to be taking this time? We start. Uh, I mean, all of the ants in this deck could have one less HP. No, 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 we have a flying ant. Okay, sorry, I thought we had a uh, ant soldier, which would have had two health already. I don't know what this does to creatures that only have one HP at all. Uh, it could do nothing, or it could remove them from the deck. I hope it's the latter. I'll find out at some point. For the moment, no boss res, boss, bo uh, boss totems, and tip scales. I tend to enjoy those ones. Single candle is going to force me to make a more viable deck as early as I can. I mean, what I'm currently leaning to is the same setup that I've had consistently, right? Our rerolls are very important when we're going to be playing ants with a few things we're desperately looking for, which I'll iterate uh, or uh, expound upon as we continue through the run. Fecundity. Uh, oh my god. Would be incredible. Many lives sigil because you want to sacrifice because all of the ants take at least one sacrifice, but you do want to get them all on board if possible. Okay. Ooh, that's interesting. Yeah, we have the full creation of the early totem here. I would have to take a trapper in order to get it. I'm pretty likely to end up avoiding both of these totems, but I really do want to get my totem online early because if I can get a good insect totem, this whole deck can take a different shape. But before we do that... Field mice and mealworm is not impossible for us to generate on board. Are you anticipating some extraordinary pellets? Here, pellets. Oh boy. Uh, we've got value available here. So the beehive is a uh, an insect itself. So it'll work with other totem bonuses that we're already going to want to put in the deck. Uh, and it has bees within, which gives you bees that themselves are insects. And then the warrens gives you a rabbit hole ability, which I could probably slot into the beehive. Then I already also have a target in the deck who's happy to take health buffs. I like that a lot. That sounds really good to me. I will make good use of these. All right. Oh, does she actually use them in the battle if we end up facing her? Is that... Is that an actual mechanic? I will find more sigil sacrifice spaces in the future. Do I need to visit the very first one in order to do this Beehive Warren situation? What if I wanted to buff or remove a minion first? So if I got damage buff here, I would probably try and use it to remove the skunk, to be entirely honest with you. If I got health buff, I would roll it once on the beehive and then I would end and I would just be like, that's good, great beehive. The allure of the totem is strong. I would only have to find one more. We're doing totem. Let's stand by our uh, principles here. I said that it was a good idea. Oh God, it's a bad idea. Um, all of our uh, bugs fly. We will sometimes want them to contest the board, is the problem. So already condemning them all to fly before I have the ability to consistently generate damage in flight to be able to kill the enemy is a little bit scary. Uh, I could take a, a skink head. Oh boy, I don't like any of this. Well, probably not gonna build the entire run around totems anymore. Let's get that strand out of there. There we go. Too much hair for the moment. Uh, I only have two slots. So I should probably pop one of my items in. No, I know I have a battle before I have my next pickup. We don't have to do that. Okay, let's get the behive down here. Um, with 
Cub's going to push four damage against the Beehive next turn. I just wonder, is this going to come down to how quickly I can generate the Ant Queen? I think it will. Yeah, because I can actually just generate the Ant Queen right now and then take the heat off. Thank heck she's not flying. Right, and then this makes it really easy to play the workaround on a later turn, and we are in clean streets. I'm actually five off lethal, so I'm gonna hold here. Get myself one away. And then drop the flying ant to overkill by eight. Damn! Do we go to the Smith? How many have I got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, it's just the total of eight, the ones I actually had. Okay. Um, a mid-tier pelt costs four, so plus five, nine? If I had a knife, I might legitimately actually choose to go. Oh, what's that at the very end? Okay, so that's a random choice, that's a blood choice, and that's a tribal choice. We're probably going to go to the tribal choice but it really is going to depend on what we have afterwards. Boy, howdy, man. Jeezy, crazy dudes. Uh, Yeah, this is all pretty sick and nasty. That, uh, that cat looks incredible. Oh my god. I have a sigil sacrifice space even in the... Okay, and that's a burn on the other side as well. Okay. We got plans. We're working. I'm figuring things out up here. A group of starving survivors blood blood at you. You understood this as a threat. Uh, so we're going to attempt to use this as removal. Worst case scenario, I get a skunk that deal two damage. Not bad, but, you know, nothing wrong with that. Again, I have another battle after this before I have any possibility of picking up something that I might not want. Uh, squirrel, cat on the left hand side, beehive over here, skunk there, great opening hand. I'm getting additional resources this turn as well. I get another bee back in hand. I have the ability to sacrifice the cat. So even if I draw the ant queen, I can actually summon it. And in fact, the other ants as well. <laughs> Love to blitz. Uh, blood cost is not appropriate for us. It's it's looking for insects, I guess. It's not nothing. That ant sporter sigil is pretty good for upkeep. Okay. So. Here's what I'm thinking. The power of ants is directly proportional to the amount of ants that you have on board, right? So if I'm going to be using the sigil of the many lies in order to summon more ants onto my board, that sigil will actually need to be held in an ant. Otherwise, I won't be able to have four ants on board because I can't sack my own cat off, right? So I think the first thing I do is the cat goes into the flying ant. That's now material as well as early damage. Incredible. Look at this opening hand. This is why I wanted to do this. Uh, squirrel summons flying ant. Summons skunk. Summons ant queen. Summons worker ant. Nine damage, turn one. We drew perfectly. I can't expect that that's going to happen consistently, but mm, it can happen, though. Uh, maybe I should have spent an item in that fight. Hopefully I don't have a bag in my near future. It has to be one blood. I can only look for one bloods right now. Yes. We, we take that. Happily. Whew. 
Oof. I mean, I think one of the beehives goes into the, the other skunk. I do think the Warrens goes into the beehive as well, though. So much material. I've almost never had this much. Uh, health, please? Love that. You'd love to see it. No. If I push this, what I'm saying is my flying ant is going to be enough material for me, which means I have to thin my deck back down. So, no. I have multiple payoffs. I have multiple ant queens. I have multiple setups. I have multiple beehives and the flying ant and other things like that. Don't push my luck. Take my card. Walk away. I'm trying not to remove, which is difficult for me. You understand? I'm addicted to not having any cards in the deck. If I could win without playing a single card, I would do it every time. <laughs> Here we go, partner. Oh. Oh. Um, okay, it's going to get blocked by the behebe. The enemy is going to crush my board at one point. I think I am going to have to kill the pack mule here. Okay. Let me push one damage myself. Okay, he gives me another pickup. Oh yeah, that flying ant is going to die. Didn't think about that. I guess we have a lot of material out of these bees. I'm not too mad about it. Uh, get another beehive down. Push one damage, block one damage with a single bee. Yes, but only because I have a beehive. Giving me another bee here. Now my skunk is actually going to kill. Uh, this is my second Ant Queen. It's the only card I have left in the deck. Uh, drawing material is going to be slightly important. It, um, it's A lot of this is going to come down to whether or not I have the ability to execute this pack mule against the enemy for a kill. That is to say, execute what I get from that for a kill. No, it's not. We play both Bs. We push two damage this turn, putting us one from lethal. We kill the skunk. Their coyotes clear two on my board. We get some material from the, the mule. Okay. Great. And then our skunk pushes lethal over the top of the enemy. They clear only two units of ours, the boulder and the skunk. We get another turn of drawing more material. We have the ability to flood out one of our ant, one of our ant queens. Yeah, possibly the other rank queen, it really depends. Um, yeah, this, this is good. Right? I'll only have two spaces on board I can actually play in, which I won't be able to push to, I won't be able to push lethal with only two spaces on board. Uh, unless I use the pliers, which I should use. Hmm. Down no way through. Because I don't want to don't end up with another pack mule. Sorry, the, uh, the, 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 the douse. Uh, sorry, I will be using pliers as well, so uh, there's your warning for five, four, three, two, goodbye, two. Cool boy. Right, and it's squirrel, squirrel, pronghorn. And then Kyoto. One, two, three, four. Now what? All right. Kingfisher. 
No, I will want to actually be able to block the enemy's damage. Pronghorn? Double strike for an Ant Queen isn't awful. Rat King. None of these are enticing in any way. Guess I take Pronghorn to give dual attack to one of my ants. Hmm. Oh, yes. I know. As the air grew humid, your boots became harder to pull from the mud. The dank smell of tepid water invaded your nostrils. You had reached the wetlands. Uh, oh, straight up card removal up here. We also have the mycologists there. I'm not really going to want to join two ant queens. Right? I like the individual ant spawners on each of them. They have... Their damage stat is ants. They're not going to have two ants as their damage stat after that. They're just going to double up their health, which is probably the least important statistic on the Ant Queen. I would more happily sacrifice the Ant Queen into other things. But even then, I like that the Ant Queen is two ants by itself. Um, If I was sacrificing a sigil into a sigil, probably a pronghorn into an Ant Queen, to be real. I'll do at least one of those. Especially with what I have at the moment. We don't have the ability not to choose to go to this, so... Hello, welcome. Kin, we're gonna absolutely fail... I believe all of these. Yeah. We don't have anyone without a sigil, and we have multiple people with two sigils, so we cannot complete the sigil challenge. Uh, we would have to draw exactly Pronghorn, Skunk, and then one of the insects, not to complete the insect challenge. And in terms of blood, we have nothing that doesn't cost blood. So I would have to get three of the one costs. If I ever drew an Ant Queen, an Ant Queen, or a Pronghorn, I would lose. So, impossible. Slightly possible. Couple of draws. Possible. Only one draw. I'll try this. Yeah, we've grown. As soon as we had one. And the trial was passed. Ooh, that's not a bad wolf. Do I end up with that many bones that I'd be able to use the alpha consistently there? I don't think so. I'm going to take a wolf just for pushing hard damage in a line. And then thin the deck down a little. I don't... I can't imagine a situation where I'm going to want to draw the pronghorn, really. There is an item pick up here, but I'm definitely not going to be taking it. Straight up, like, get the heck out of the deck? What straight up gets the heck out of the deck for us? It's probably going to be the addition from this space, to be entirely honest with you. We'll see what it is. Oh, great opening, great opening. Specifically, it's lethal already. Oh, boy. You have to love it. Out. I mean, again, we're probably looking for it. Man, a worker ant. I don't think I removed that. That doesn't make it skunk, does it? I'm actually leaning towards wolf right now. Or beehive. No, I'm, I'm down on material. It's wolf. That's such a harsh choice to make, but I still have the ability to slot other sigils into other cards that I still have in- Oh god, now I'm- I have to join the Ant Queens. I don't have a choice. There's a mycologist in the future. Oh well. Oh, uh, just let us happen. Get to uh, skunk out on the board, because really depends on our draw order here as whether or not this is going to be a- long or a short endeavor on our part. Okay, a short endeavor is uh, what this one's going to turn out to be. 
I just need one more piece. There it goes. Uh, I'm gonna have to make sure the flying ant deals damage as well. So it probably goes over the line of the skink. Yeah, that's what we want to be doing with this deck every single time that we draw with this deck. Oh, it's so much gold that I'm never going to use. Unless there's... Unless I'm forced to on this path. I'll lean in. Try to blood, kin, and hell. Uh... Without drawing the one, the two, and the two specifically, I can't complete health. And again, I can't complete... Wait, I actually can't complete kin at all. Yeah, everyone except for the skunk is a... Is, is, is a bit, oh, God. <laughs> uh, and blood? In, theoretically, there are a couple of draws I can do that wouldn't hit for blood. Damn it. I was so close. A cockroach that evolves, though. When it comes back to hand, will it re-get the fledgling symbol? And if I replay it, will it... I mean, look, it's it's positive material, right? Oh, there's so many mycologists, and I can't take advantage of all of them. It's making me very, very nervous. We'd like to experiment. Oh, I do have the hives, though. Ooh. I did forget about that. That works for me. A little bit less material in the deck right now. All two sack spaces in a... This is where we become power. Get him. Absolutely get him. I think it was a little pick-me-up. So I'm gonna push that damage through the back line. Uh, my skunk is going to die this round after the mantis takes it out. I'm fine with that. I'm getting so much material. Another ant queen, eh? Takes me two bees to put down a single ant queen, but that ant queen isn't really that valuable until I get another one. Uh, I mean, I can just contest this mantis. Enemy only deals two damage this turn. Yeah, I don't need to, I don't need to be quick here. Uh, that's that would be a mistake on my part, in fact. We'll use that Ant Queen as well. Perfect. So I can just get another Ant Queen down. And be, you know, draw out, get the Ant Queen. Push four damage this turn, that would do. The enemy's response would actually be that Mantis and the, the Worker Ant trying to kill my Ant Queen, but it would sprint out of the position to be able to kill. Okay. I'm not gonna I'm gonna look into that one too deeply. It's working as well as it could possibly, I think. Two of them down. I move out of the direction. Uh four. I'm able to push that much damage to the back line. Yes, yes I am actually. It's just single work around a loot. Oh no! Right, oh uh, yeah, of course. Uh, Cause the Ant Queen kills it first. We're not gonna be able to carry the Ant Queen as well as the worker ants damage through the back line. Not in that instance, the absolute least. Here we will though. 
because it's lethal. Okay. Mm, there's the meal worm. Meal worm, good. Meal worm into skunk wouldn't be that bad. I'm about to go to two mycologist spaces. I do feel like I should probably get an endless ant queen so that no matter what the enemy does to me, I still have the ability to put you know, value back onto the board. That said, I already have a cockroach in the deck. But like, I'm not gonna be able to join those at all because the cockroach already has a sigil in it. So I'm gonna take this cockroach. And if I do take this cockroach, what is my other sacrifice? It's possible that one of the things I might want to do here is sack this ant queen into the other worker ant. Just make it cheaper, right? Only one blood sacrifice and it gives me another one blood sacrifice. So it's way easier to summon. Um, in which case then I'd be looking for a sigil to slot into the skunk or for the skunk's sigil to slot into. I mean, mealworm could be that. Mealworm could legitimately be that for us. Go into the skunk. Oh, I like that. I, I I deeply like that. I like that so much that I'm gonna drop out the bottom range of my own uh, <laughs> my own vocal. Uh, I accidentally said the word range in the setup, which means I can't say it in the punchline. All right. Oh, it's really like a setup punchline. Anyway, uh, skunk. I, I think this is fine. Like, Skunk is just an early power minion that now translates its early power into later games as well. You beheld an immense man slouched beside a mucky pond. He appeared to be tearing hunks of flesh from a fish corpse. Some chunks were thrown back to the pond where a few ghoulish birds snapped them up, and some were sloppily pushed into the hulking man's mouth. Yummy, yummy fish! Have you tried so strumming? I thought it would be too much for me too, but I love it. Um... Kingfisher... I, I, I am tempted to just hold right now. Summoning the flying ant would be three damage over the top, and then next turn we would do another three damage over the top. That would be if I used the skunk to summon it. Unless this turn I just summon the skunk for damage. I could get the flying ant and the skunk out on the field. I guess. Let's try that. This will negate the enemy's swing in of damage this turn. And then I still have three damage on board because they had one tick towards me. So I needed to deal six damage guaranteed over these two turns to make sure that I didn't get stolen from, uh, regardless of whatever this draw happens to be. I mean, it's actually a fine draw for us, but we don't need to push any more damage right now. Go fish! That's fine. Um, so ultimately I want three ants on this board. Not a problem at all. Oh no. The ant queen wants to be in one of the middle spaces. So that it can actually attack. We'll sack the skunk for it. Fine. Looks good to me. And then push even more damage through over the top. Uh, we haven't fought 
No, wait, have- I think we have bought Trapper and Hunter already. Right? They were the first? No, Prospector was the first. I haven't fought Trapper and Hunter. I don't think. I'm not flying it. I mean, honestly, that might just be fuel for a mycologist, as well as the ability to get a second sigil into the flying ant. If, uh, <laughs> I usually don't leave one of my windows open when I'm recording, but I just want a little gust of air through the house. The relief of fresh air quickly gave way to a bone-shaking chill. You guessed at the path ahead as the snow increasingly obscured it. You'd climb to the snow line. Do I? Do I even have a sacrifice I can make in the deck? I don't. I can't take the left pass here. That's fine. I'm, I'm more than happy to go for a straight up removal here. I like that cockroach actually legitimately isn't giving me any value right now. I would have to be already quite screwed for it to be good. I guess I should only care about the sigil right now, which means I take Pronghorn to go into the Flying Ant. Oh, that's locked behind you. There's no way I'm finishing a totem in time. Not a good one. Uh, so I specifically want to remove one of the minions that has a sigil already in it, because that maintains more removal opportunities in my deck of putting one uh, card into another. So sometimes I'll make a decision there that I'm making exclusively so that I maintain slottable cards in the deck. Just in case it ever seems like it was a counterintuitive removal to something that I wanted. Um, obviously, sometimes that will actually just be the case and I've made a mistake, uh, but sometimes that's the consideration being made. We can play this one slow in the opening. Push two with Skunk. Block one of the Elk. Uh, yikes. So they push four damage next turn with the Elk Fawn and the other Elk, which kills me. On board at the moment. I only have one candle. So seeming the solution would be squirrel down a flying ant to push one damage for me in order to give me a little bit more solidity on the board, uh, or sack this skunk with pronghorn in order to get a, a, a double tap attack here. Uh, like, you know, push three damage on this line, kill this elk fawn, move one space over. I want to put it here? Or here? Because here, like, I still only take two damage next turn, right? From this elk spawning in. This one kills this elk fawn, and then theirs turns over, attacks mine, doesn't manage to do anything. So I'm at a 3 4 at that point. I've moved back into this field. Wait, no. It won't attack me because I've moved back into this field. So only if I do it here. Would that work? But that wouldn't work. Ah, I'm going to sprint and they're going to sprint. So the the ground is shifting here and they're sprinting in different directions as well. You know what? Screw it. No, we're just... It kills. Draw material next time. Uh, perfect. And then the beehive is exactly the kind of thing that I would want to get sitting in a position like that. So take no damage here. I love that they're just straight up blocking themselves in there. Absolutely beautiful. You love to see it. I don't think I've handled this fight excellently. At all. 
But I am glad that I made that pronghorn play early. Um, get two. Two of them on the board. Uh, that is to say, bees. Uh, bees? No. Uh, ants. Ants. It's one worker ant down. So currently I'm pushing three damage against the enemy. Sorry, four damage against the enemy. Uh, I could make that seven. Go straight for lethal. The flying ant here. I don't think I gotta mess around with them anymore. Let's do it. I really don't want to have to go to a trader after picking up trappers. Work there. I mean, I only really need one more sigil space. Sure, let's set myself up to possibly still find a totem that's useful, because there's so many of them in the deck. Oh, God. Again, are we in the same position? Yeah, we're in very similar position. Uh, one, one, oh, three. Okay. Um, we can succeed health, and theoretically, we can succeed the uh, kin, but again, we would have to draw pronghorn and skunk, which, no, health. <laughs> Immediately failed. Uh, Dam Builder. Dam Builder. That's, I mean, it's a good stalling tool while I look for extra health, I guess. Not, not jazz to have it at all. But it might possibly be better than not having it in some situations. Okay, never mind. This is, this is, uh, Gravage. Gar bag. Well, I'm gonna do that. Which is, I guess, exclusively so that if I get a skink, I can use it. I'm glad I didn't try and focus very early on uh, in getting a bunch of totems, because that would have let me <laughs> down. I mean, the skunk under that turkey vulture looks pretty good to me right now. <laughs> Otherwise, it's a pretty overwhelming amount of damage. I could also just get a flying ant out contesting this mole. So that, you know, uh, death is slower. <laughs> Uh -huh. I can push four damage this turn as well as kill the turkey vulture. I like it. <sighs> I forgot that the mole was getting... My life, my entire life flashed before my eyes right there. Uh... Thankfully, I think we're back in the good graces of possible victoire. Alright, consider a removal space for us. Another warrant. Are any of these capable of interrupting what I already want to do? Honestly, this flying ant having a, a rabbit hole would not be that bad. But also, it delivering twice as much damage is pretty sick. I'm gonna reroll. I would take the warren if it was on my second reroll. Not on the first one there, though. This is let me down. Uh, 
second removal. I guess I'm gonna slot the elk into something at some point. Get him, flyer. Mm, another totem, and there's a totem in the next area as well. Just saying. <gasps> it's the god hand. We've done it. Flying ant go down. Flying ant go down. Worker ant. And worker ant. Now they can remove every other card from the deck and do that more consistently. Uh, how dare they not let me do that? It's the right move. Uh, black go? I mean, I don't have. Yeah, I've just got the the one one ant queen. I don't know, two ant queens. No, I the other one went into the worker ant. Yeah, I've only got the one ant queen. I guess the elk. Uh, so I don't think that's the way we want to go with that. Wolverine. This is the uh, additional power if it kills something. Also not huge. Uh, honestly, I probably just want to sack the elk into a ant if I can do that. That would be lovely. Hmm. Turkey Vulture is like a second possible finisher if everything goes absolutely awfully wrong. I'm not thrilled about it, but thins down the deck nicely. So we're not going to use the Sigil sacri space, uh, Sacrifice space in the next area. Hopefully, I maybe, maybe we get a totem now. There's the insect head. Maybe I actually go to the totem in the final area. I almost never do. I'm not going to give the the insect totem the ability to block enemies' incoming damage because a lot of the time I'm not going to want to block their damage. I'm just going to want to contest it by flying over the top and doing pronged stuff. Their health stats aren't good. Their damage stats are good. Anytime uh, one of the trapper's minions kills something, it gets extra damage. You took in the familiar sights and scents of the trapper's parents. But something was different. The once friendly man now beheld you with a steely gaze. You shouldn't have come here. You should not have come here. Alright. Mm. This beehive is perfectly positioned to get me everything I need for this entire fight. So it's quite, it's quite adorable. It's remarkable. It's lovely. It's good. I think I'm happy starting to lose the skunk. Okay, let's think about this for a second. We get one more B. Our skunk pushes damage against the strange frog. Strange frog spawns the leaping trap. The leaping trap doesn't do anything in response. Uh, next turn, our skunk is vulnerable to just dying straight up to that leaping trap. So what I'm going to want to do is summon the flying ant instead in the skunk's position with its extra damage. The skunk attacks left and attacks right. Uh, in doing so, it clears this, getting a leaping trap available in this beehive line and makes a leaping trap available in this line as well. Uh... I'm going to want to sacrifice bees to the leaping traps in order to get pelts. Do I need to take action this turn? No, I need to take action next turn. No matter what. We can. Yeah, we can. We can. Think of the bee. Right. Yes, but we can't have two pronged attackers out at the same time. Okay. Flying ant goes down. Left, right. Then their whole board is leaping traps. I move over. Left, right. And then in that position, I put two... Yeah, we're done. We're done. Whew. This is just one of the fights where I could suddenly kill myself and it'd be pretty bad. Uh, so I'm very glad to instead of these bees. And that pushes enough damage to the back line to kill as well. Same there, kills the adder. 
Great. And then I have the ability already to get a leaping trap out here. And then next turn, that flying ant is actually going to win the round. So I just lose this one leaping. Yeah, I'm actually fine with losing that one leaping, but at the same time, I don't even need to, do I? Uh, because I've got another prong to tagger in the uh, in the in the ant queen. So we go squeal, flying ant, ant queen. Feels like beehive. Gives it the wolf pelt. So now we'll have the total of five wolf pelts, which means there's nothing the enemy can do to me. No population of their board can prevent me from just buying everything and winning. <laughs> so I guess I'm. Just gonna go with that. So I've been trying to lean towards putting pronged attacks, triplicate attacks, bifurcated attacks, triplicated attacks, uh, double strike, things like this, uh, onto the bees. And a large amount of the reason for that is, you know, it helps invalidate bosses like this. Like you can attack to both sides and avoid attacking the buckets, and you know, you can you can do a lot of fun stuff with it. Uh, but the most important thing is because how do you increase the damage if every one of your characters on board just does ant damage, right? You are limited by the amount of ants you can have on board unless they attack multiple times uh, or have some other statistic bonuses and things like that as well. Let's be clear. There are other options. Um... The corpse maggot summing itself out of my hand in order to defend a little bit for us isn't awful. It's not good. It's not awful. We will need another map. Actually taking the totem here. Come on, fecundity or uh, something good. Bifurcated strike, double strike. Endless. Okay. We do that. We absolutely do that. It just means I can't run out of material, basically. <laughs> oh, yes, one more to be safe. You think it's gonna be enough, bud? You think it's gonna save you? <laughs> Get the god opening hand. It's okay. Oh! That's it! That's the opening hand you want! Holy cremoli! Uh... <laughs> uh... Okay, so, Flying Ant, you should be on the periphery. And then you summon the skunk, and then I sacrifice both of you to get the air queen out. And then we summon the work ramp. So we actually push eight damage in this line. We push three damage to an amalgam that isn't even summoned. And then we kill the enemy with eight damage. They'll wipe their backboard. They'll put down some things they think will defend them. <laughs> How foolish. You think those would keep you safe. Nothing can keep you safe. There we go. And it's time for the moon, baby. That flying ant immediately comes back as soon as I need it to by summoning itself over the top of the corpse maggots that I'm holding in hand so I can still keep aggressively drawing from my deck. Uh, I don't care about them all. Oh no, I what, what happened? Oh, that's great! Uh, we get you back down there, and then flying ant with multi-strike, and is that lethal? That's lethal. And we even, uh, we don't finish it off with a full five damage here. 
We finish it off with four. So I have to go for another full round's worth of damage, but that's actually, gosh, dang, excellent. Gigantic overkill. <sighs> All right, that one went well. I think that one went well. Entry nine. Data in beta state. For quality concerns, please contact Kaminsky Data Storage, MFG. We've unlocked the Tadpole. Waterborne, and it will grow into a more powerful form after one turn on the board. So I think similar to a couple of characters in the game, this implies that this is a young character, the young of another character, right? Tadpole, Direwolf Pup is another example of that. Um, and therefore that when it ages, it will become something more unique than just a elder tadpole that has one damage and three health. Uh, is it possible it becomes a, a great white shark? I don't know, I don't, it, are tadpoles the larval form of sharks? Sharks, sharks come fully fledged out of their eggs, don't they? I'm pretty sure they come like, I think, I, I think they break open their own eggs. I think they're like on some sick reptile stuff. Unlocked a new starter deck as well. Uh, holy crumbs? Uh, this is a new starter deck of cards that just have zero cost. Well, I know what I'm being, uh, I'm going to be doing next. Squirrel fish challenge unlocked. Your squirrels now have the waterborne sigil. So you can't block with them. I almost never do that. <laughs> That's going to be fine for me. Oh. You'll love to see it for the moment, though. My name is Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Inscription. Up at the top left, you can see the series playlist for all of the content of the game, past, present, and future. Directly down below, you can see a YouTube recommendation for what it thinks you should watch next. Streaming past the names of the people so generously supporting the Republic on Patreon.com slash Rhapsody Plays out or above $10 tier. And a special thanks this episode to John. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves, and hopefully we'll see you next time.